Megan here. Continue on the series on testosterone. How does sex hormone binding globulin affect the testosterone levels in a negative way, obviously. So again, watch my primary video on how testosterone works, you know, how it's released and things like that. Uh, long story short, only 2% of your testosterone is active. A lot of you guys know this. 98% of testosterone in your body cannot do jack shit, right? It's attached to uh, proteins like albumin and sex hormone binding globulin which stops it from binding to the receptors. You know, remember, if your hormones cannot land on the receptors and form a new complex, they cannot get their effects across, right? So, believe it or not, a lot of people don't, don't realize this, but all of the effects of testosterone that you witness in your body, increased body fat uh, uh, oxidation, increased muscle mass, increased mood, greater energy, greater uh, blood cell count, increased appetite, increased aggression and desire to take risks, all these benefits of testosterone, can only uh, happen if testosterone is in its free form, right? And that's 2% of your body's testosterone, 2%, right? Isn't it amazing? All of these things are only being caused by 2% of your body's testosterone. That is the equivalent of a drop of water in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, right? Can you imagine if you just double that, if 4% of your body's testosterone is free? Fucking crazy, right? The body knows testosterone is so powerful that it has ways to actually, like, limit it. So, uh, again, it is very important to not just increase your total testosterone, but also increase the amount of free testosterone. Because somebody who has low total testosterone, but high free testosterone, is going to have a lot more anabolic effects than somebody who has high total testosterone, but very low free testosterone. So, it's all about free. So, now the question is, how do I uh, make more of my testosterone free? How do I liberate the motherfucker? Lower sex hormone binding globulin, and that's his name. Sex hormone, right? Testosterone and androgens binding globulin. It's the globulin that binds to the sex hormones. There are many ways to lower this motherfucker, right? Obviously, you know, there's the, you know, take zinc, take the, some you know, vitamins and minerals, but the main way is, number one, insulin, right? So you got to make sure you're eating enough carbs. Um, that's what's going to happen by, you know, with a high-protein diet, but get your carbs, you know, get your carbs. Don't neglect your carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not evil if you know how to use them right, you know. If you insulin resistant, then try to cycle them, you know, or try to uh, increase, uh, you know, glute teeth through carb backloading or things like that. So insulin reduces sex hormone binding globulin, and um, again, like I mentioned, carbs. Uh, I, I don't want to go into the details because I already mentioned that in the, in, the, in the previous videos, but I want you guys to focus on those top two things, you know. That's, that's what's going to give you the quickest effect on sex hormone binding globulin. Um, that's also why people that go on low carb diets experience a huge drop in testosterone levels, even when the calories are equal. I keep telling you guys, it's not all about calories, it's about hormone manipulation. You know, two people can have the exact same uh, caloric intake, but have drastic differences in their hormones, simply because of those tiny tweaks. All right, so I hope that explains the importance of lowering sex hormone binding globulin. It frees testosterone. All right, guys, hope this helps. If I forgot anything, comment below, you know. Uh, if you have questions for the next videos, also comment that. If you're new, subscribe, fuck with Team 3D, like the video, and stay tuned for the next one. All right, done.